We are on question 11. We are about halfway through the section, which means things are going to start to get a little trickier, a little bit more SAT kind of trap heavy. So we got to think about that, especially with geometry. So let me show you what I mean. But let's start with the very simple information that they give us. The, the circle has this uh, center. The circumference is 144 pi. So that's probably important. C equals 144 pi. Um, and diameter is PR and QS. The length of arc PS is twice the length of PQ. Okay, so here's a case where I would use some algebra to help me. So PQ is X and PS is twice the length of that. So that's 2X. That also tells us about the other side. And, and you probably can just see this with your eyes. You don't need to necessarily think about the justification. But because PR and QS are diameters, we, we basically can mirror what we just did on the other side of the circle. So this is a 2x and this is an x up here. So it, it all matches the proportions because of the fact that those are diameters. If they weren't diameters, things would get trickier, but easier question because they are. So what do we need to do? Well, all those things together are going to add up to our 144 pi. So I would create an equation that represents that, right? So the full way around the circle is 144 pi. The full way around our circle involves an x, let me do this down here, an x plus a 2x plus another x plus another 2x. So just combine like terms. So 2 and 2 is 4 plus another 2 would be 6x is equal to 144 pi divide by 6 to get that x is equal to, I would just use here, simple calculator. I don't like the Desmos calculator for most normal arithmetic, so we use a scientific one. So x is 24, which is choice A, and if you picked it, shame on you. Trap! We got to see this stuff coming at this stage, okay? Now, if you think about it for a second, you can probably see the right answer. What we found is x, so that's like something like sr uh, 24 pi or pq 24 pi. What do they want? They want qr, which is, of course, the 2x side. You should see this coming. They're going to do this. They do it every SAT. They do it on every kind of like hard or to medium to hard geometry question. They ask for something that you aren't going to solve for like immediately, okay? They know what you're going to label X, and they will ask for something other than that. So you have to be really careful with this. This is going to happen on your test, I promise. So you have to be able to avoid this trap. It would be such a shame if you got this wrong because you just couldn't be bothered to double check and multiply your answer by two. That's it. The last step is really easy. It's just multiplying 24 by two. But most people are going to forget to do it because they're not used to thinking about tests this way. They don't recognize that the SAT is actively trying to trick you, distract you, and force you to make errors. So certain parts of the test, we need to keep that in mind and adjust our strategy to reflect that. And if you can't do that, you are going to waste at least 50 points per test for no good reason. So it's a really important strategy to just remember that this is not a math test, it is an SAT. So it plays by slightly different rules than your math teachers do, and you've got to play by those rules as well.